And Osgood standing there in the dark, asking me uh, for another rubber. You got a small condom, bro. You said a small condom? <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving into r slash tales of neckbeards. No wait, it's neckbeard stories. It is neckbeard stories. <laughs> Legitimately, not even from my personal subreddit, r slash red x reads. I forgot that Ram Tide is able to post in Neckbeard Stories. So yes, Neckbeard Stories, that's what we're doing. And yes, it is Ram Tide. God damn, I'm a mess already today. Apologies <laughs> in advance for everything that is about to happen in this video. But it is the continuation of the Osgood saga. Numbers have been suffering just a little bit for poor young Osgood. I guess people don't really want like an outwardly wholesome beard tail, but <laughs> from the way that things are looking, it's not going to stay wholesome for very long. We've now got a leg beard barging into Ramtide's house because Osgood kind of got swerved. And uh, instead of going after the milady he was supposed to go after, he ended up settling for this leg beard. So I'm sure some cringe will ensue. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this neck beard stories cringe. Because it is neck beard stories. Also, check out my podcasts. Osgood moves in. Part three, the visitor. Oh my God, and we already know who the visitor is too. <laughs> it was previewed in the last story. And also, Red X wants to spoon feed you this cringe. Consume. <laughs> yes, that is all I ask of you, is to sit back and consume. Ram tidings, dear friends. It is I, your dutiful lord and master, the eternal GM. Where last we parted ways, Osgood had moved into my house, and after one particularly low-spirited night, declared to me that he believed himself to be a loser, and that he would never win the affections of his lady love. I took it upon myself to assist my dear brother in any way that I humanly could, principally by helping him purge some of his, ah, uh, less-than-savory habits. <laughs> of which he had quite a few, but he's always been a wholesome good boy, you know. He just had a little too much of that beard on the inside, had to go bushwhacking, <laughs> and it seems to have worked with flying colors. With a renewed fire burning in his belly, I sent him back out into the world with the express purpose of him taking a shot at winning his chosen woman's hand and heart. However, things took an unexpected turn, when he came back to the apartment that evening. He did not return with some manic pixie dream girl in tow, but instead an individual whom I suspect to be nothing less than an odious leg beard. Ugh, torn between expelling her from my house and bittering Osgood, or just letting him learn some much needed hard life lessons on his own, I took then his invitation to meet this creature that now sat upon my couch. And with that, we continue this tale from the tabletop. How did we get here? Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, no one knows where we're going. There's just no way of knowing. There's no earthly way of knowing. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the downward trajectory upon which we've been steadily bound, Red X can shed some light on this conundrum with the tale of our story so far, found at the following links. Beard Hunting with Adelaide, or How I Met Osgood, that is the big beefy one at the very top of the description, right under Ramtide's Patreon link, I do think. We've also got Shaving of the Beard Part 1 and Shaving of the Beard Part 2. My goodness. It could have been so easy, short and quick. He went to the magic shop and got told yes or no by that girl and we move on from there. But no, he had to bring home a leg beard. <laughs> but I guess I'm grateful for the tale. And do I really have to say it? I mean, I probably do, so I am going to say it. 
simply because there's always someone crying about how they lost their lunch in the comments section. <laughs> Particularly in some of the nastier videos, but yeah, it happens from time to time. That's why we got the disclaimer and such. Neckbeards are not a pleasant subject. Their female counterparts are certainly not much better. Uncomfortable descriptions and topics may arise. You have been warned. Twice now. That's right. Gotta get the plugs out of the way twice. Gotta get the disclaimers out of the way twice. Now we are ready to settle in for a story. <laughs> Osgood and I stood there in my room in stark night and day contrast. He giddily bounced towards a punji trap while my predatorial cognition told me to tread carefully. Him, a bouncing ball of joy that had brought a woman home all on his own. And I, dubious about the middle-aged female thing that sought to seduce this lad barely out of his mother's home. He could only see stars, and I could only smell cat urine-flavored death. And also poop. Because I think that's what they, they smear on the punji sticks so your wound gets infected, right? <laughs> that's how they do it. Osgood insists, Come on, Ramtide. Just meet her. Why couldn't he bring home quite literally anyone else? Why her? Of all the people who populated this world. <laughs> I was not excited to leave my room and engage with the mouth-breathing troglodyte that now waited on my couch to smother Osgood beneath its fleshy folds in porcine ecstasy. <laughs> God. Oh, that Ramtide riding. Beautiful. Stealth Beard and Ramtide going at the same time. Fuck, it, we are feasting these days. <laughs> I wanted to lock this poor kid in my room, grab my SCA sword and shield, and drive her out of my home. <laughs> like a righteous knight bequeathing his fury to a hideous ogre. Beside me, however, Osgood beamed at me, assuring me over and over that it would be all right, unaware that this creature would indeed grind his bones to dust to bake its yeasty bread deep inside her love oven. <laughs> God, that's good cringe. I choked back bile, as he stood up from his chair and opened the door to my sanctuary and beckoned for me to follow him back out into the front of the house. Oh no, I guess this is happening now. <laughs> I trudged behind him as he entered the living room and on the couch laid the ogre, who was already making herself at home, of course. She had removed her ankle boots, letting her fat leg shift back into its natural formation about her ankle, or probably cankle, and she popped her socked feet up on the couch. The odor gently rose into the air, uh, permeating the living room with its cheesy aura. Uh, God! No, you gotta go. You gotta go now. Uh, do you know your feet smell bad, or do you just not care? Wash your feet if you're going to take your shoes off in my house, man. Oh, strike one. <laughs> Osgood moved to the couch, and she lifted her girthy eggs into the air, only for him to sit down beside her, and she placed her legs back down atop his lap. The rabbit struggled to escape from the snare that tightened around its throat. Osgood sat there, red-faced, with his hands on her legs, unsure of what to do next his neck now caught in the blubbery wire of her limbs. <laughs> oh no, not Osgood, my sweet little wholesome boy. <laughs> uh, I sat down in my recliner and turned to face both of them. I caught her rolling some green mucus between two fingertips, <gasps> which she smeared on the back of the sofa. Hey, Meg. Proud of you. <gasps> Oh, God! <laughs> Strike two! And three, possibly. What the fuck? <laughs> the hunter was already marking her territory. Osgood? Sorry about that, babe. <laughs> we had some house business to sort out, I guess, but, uh, it's all good. Anyways, this is my roommate, Ramtide. I tried my best to feign cheer. <laughs> but I've never been very good 
at burying my thoughts beneath my demeanor. Flat, monotone, and short, the word hi slipped out of my mouth with reflexive animosity that spoke to my innermost feelings on this particular matter. She smiled at me, exposing her crooked, yellowing teeth and offering me her name. Everybody gets a name, but here, our usual naming conventions fail, as she had never sat at my tabletop and rolled a character before or since our encounter. Instead, we shall simply choose a name for her. I will always refer to her as La Ogra. <laughs> well, she is Hispanic. I guess it's pretty obvious whether she is or not, but <laughs> it is kind of in your face, isn't it? Oh, she's going to be uh, Spanish, but have a British accent, by the way. La Ogra. Hi, Ramtide. It's nice to meet you. I'm La Ogra. Ramtide. <laughs> so, uh, how did you meet Osgood? La Ogra broke into a long monologue, detailing how she had went to the comic book shop to see if a new issue of her favorite reading material was in stock yet. I can't recall what it was. I never cared much for comics, and I usually gloss over when people talk about them. That's true. I mean, I'm a video game nerd, and <laughs> Ramtide is a tabletop nerd. That's not to say that I wouldn't get into comics, but uh, nobody has turned me on to them quite yet. But Ramtide did turn me on to tabletop, so I guess anything's possible. I will get beardy and beardier as the years go on. <laughs> <laughs> And that is when she had seen Osgood walk in from the front. True to the methodology that I had drummed into his head, I surmised that Osgood must have felt the need to warm up a little bit in real life before approaching his dream girl, and he approached La Ogra, greeting her and introducing himself. Somebody in the comments said you gotta slay a few dragons before you meet the queen or something like that. <laughs> I thought that was beautiful. I don't know if I hearted it, but I should have. Osgood and La Ogra broke into a long and drawn out conversation about their favorite nerdy things before Osgood was about to take his leave and make his big move. It was at that moment when La Ogra decided to make a move all on her own, coming on to Osgood, making flirtatious remarks and getting touchy feely. Poor Osgood must have been overwhelmed. I had never taught him that he should have standards, <laughs> or how and when to reject in advance and say no, and he must have decided to pounce on the easy success that he had enjoyed. And now, with La Ogra in tow, he had decided to bring her back to my house. Oh, God. <laughs> Again, part of my brain wants to say, just back off, you know, let him do what he's going to do, but... The more Ramtide describes him as this young, wholesome boy, <laughs> like, God damn it, this should not be his first experience. That's terrible. I pressed for more information about her, simply because it's easy to get people to talk about themselves, one of the tips that was offered to Osgood. She lived alone, not far from where we did, and kept several cats. Note my distinct lack of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could have guessed that one. She'd been a frequent visitor of the local game shop for years, coming by every week to pick up new editions of her favorite comics, and she professed to knowing all of the regulars and being close friends with the owners. There was a wellspring of information there which I could surely plumb if I had the inclination or the need. Silence descended upon the room. The smug glares of the huntress peeked out from behind the folds of her face, doting on Osgood with puppy eyes, and scrutinizing me with all the wiles of a jungle cat. She knows what she's doing, for sure, dude. I like her less and less. She's already gotten three strikes within, like, the first fucking minute of walking into the room. I don't like her one bit. I wondered if perhaps she knew, on some primal level, my misgivings about the entirety of the situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and reiterate <laughs> that she definitely fucking knew. Still, besides her age and general demeanor, I really had nothing to go on. Osgood had committed himself to his course of action and insisted everything was fine. Sometimes people just need to fall and scrape their knees, I mused. I stood up, 
wished Osgood a good night while ignoring La Ogre completely, and returned to my room. I lay down in my bed and closed my eyes. I couldn't tell you the hour upon which I woke, but the squealing of agonized bed springs drove me from my slumber. <laughs> oh no! Poor Osgood! This is how he lost it? I mean, the first one is usually pretty bad, but this is like double plus extra bad. <laughs> I feel so bad for that little boy. I lay there in the darkness, listening to the cacophony of an unholy communion <laughs> taking place across the hall. <laughs> God! Uh, with each thrust, the wood of the bed frame groaned beneath the combined weight of Osgood, but mostly... La Ogra, <laughs> and the nasal cries of ecstasy that Osgood emitted carried the melody over the bass tones of La Ogra's baritone grunts. Ah, uh, uh, ow, ow! <laughs> God! Uh, I tossed and I turned, holding my pillow to my ears, trying to drown out the literal nightmare fuel that was now recording its soundtrack into my subconscious. <laughs> Uh, I feel bad for everybody in this story, really. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Eventually, it ended with a pronounced moan from my now deflowered roommate, and the world went completely quiet for a few minutes. Blessed silence. Although, maybe not so blessed, because now you have time to meditate on what the hell exactly just happened. <laughs> a bit of unholy penance. Jesus, poor Osgood, I can't say it enough. <laughs> With that fucking waking nightmare now past, I debated between returning to sleep for a nightmare proper or, <laughs> or simply making some coffee and turning on the Xbox. My debate was short-lived as a timid knock came to my door. I got out of bed to find Osgood standing there in the dark, asking me uh, for another rubber. You got a small condom, bro. You said a small condom? <laughs> he was going for round two. <laughs> God. <laughs> I gave him a whole stack, told him to knock himself out, and then headed to the kitchen. The coffee pot bubbled and babbled its condolences, <laughs> as we all did. In the dead of the night, I continued my lesion run. Envisioning the face of La Ogre upon every innocent whom I slaughtered, mumbling under my breath with each slice of the machete about how degenerates like her belonged on a cross. <laughs> I bet a Legion run would be fun in Fallout New Vegas, but I'm going to make a note to not do it with melee weapons, because that's so passe, isn't it? <laughs> I must have dozed off, because the next thing I recalled was that it was daylight. The sun filtered through the curtains while somebody sang about their jingle jangling spurs from the TV speakers. <laughs> there was still cold coffee in the pot, and I drank it down black before sinking into the couch once more. I prayed for a moment that the events of last night were simply a dream. Some fitful, feverish, horrible dream that hadn't actually come to pass. It wasn't until I heard Osgood and La Ogra giggling from the end of the hall that I knew my wishes were going to be denied. The crows had come home to roost. Ugh. <laughs> Osgood exited the room first, trudging into the living room without a shirt on, glowing with the aura of a man who just had a long night of coitus. I mean, it's usually cool, but think about who you're doing it with. <laughs> uh, he had claimed his manhood by bedding down with the most abhorrent creature that I could possibly envision. And yet, here he was, fine with what unspeakable acts he had committed in the throes of their vile passion. <laughs> uh, he greeted me with a good morning, and I swear that his voice had dropped several octaves just overnight. I looked over at him as he stood by the coffee pot, a novel and unusual swagger in his steps. Maybe it's true. Gotta slay some dragons to, to step up to the queen. <laughs> but I think now he's gonna get kind of uh, stuck on La Ogra. Ramtide asks bluntly, 
Did you wrap it, Osgood? What? Ramtide, did you use a condom? Did you use a fucking rubber? <laughs> Osgood? Yeah, the first time. The second time it broke, but we just kept going. It felt way better. She told me that she was clean, so there was nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, no. Rookie mistake, son. I mean, most STDs can be cured, but what if you plant a seed in that leg beard oven? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 18 and a father with this, this horrible beast. No, no, please, not Osgood. He deserves better. <laughs> this is my prayer to the heavens to not let this happen. Osgood let out a laugh that quickly changed to a snort. <laughs> and I brooded on the horrors that I had unwittingly unleashed in the comfort of my own home. The apparitions of my dear, sweet young Osgood, fitfully plunging his uncovered ding-dong <laughs> into a frothing, musky cesspool of slimy, unwashed snatch. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if we had to go that far with it. <laughs> I feel like I just got punched in the gut. Oh, it hurt me on a spiritual level. I think it just hurt me on a physical level, bro. Clean? Clean as compared to what? <laughs> a lot lizard? <laughs> I was sick. I got up from the couch and walked over to the kitchen. I paused just short of Osgood, extended my hands, and laid them upon his bare shoulders and looked him dead in the eyes. Ramtide, you're your own man, Osgood. I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what I think you should do. I don't like her, Osgood. There's something off about her, man. Get rid of her. Get her out of the house. Cut contact and just move on with your life. Go get a health screening in a couple of weeks, too, just to be sure. You don't know her, man. You can't just take everyone's word on everything at face value, especially not someone that you just met last night. I really do only want the best for you, bud, but she is not it. <laughs> In any way, shape, or form. Not it. I mean, yeah, she touches your penis and that makes you feel good. I know, but that's not a good reason to keep someone around. Tell her to kick rocks, dude. I know it sounds cold, but it is for the best. I promise. People never take advice. He's not gonna listen. <laughs> He's gonna get the clap from this leg beard. Clap, clap. Behind the rims of his glasses, Osgood's eyes narrowed at me as I spoke my plea. Osgood, are you jealous? <laughs> You're jealous, aren't you, Ramtide? Is that what this is about? If it were someone else, I bet you'd say the same thing too. <laughs> I hate to say this to you, dude, especially after everything you've done to help me, but you've been nothing but an asshole since she showed up. I mean, Ramtide's nothing but an asshole <laughs> most of the time. You must be new here or something. No, I'm not going to tell her to leave. I like her and that's it. I'm not going to throw her out. You're acting like a weirdo. <laughs> no you, dude. Somebody tickles your pee-pee and you're fucking off to the races? <laughs> you got a lot to learn. Osgood shrugged my hands from his shoulders, pushed his glasses back up the bridge of his nose, and poured a couple of cups of coffee for him... And La Ogra. <laughs> he was no longer the lovable little nerd who I had taken beneath my wing. He had turned me out and now scorned my guidance. And yet, he was right. She had, as of this moment, done nothing to warrant such a heightened degree of concerned vigilance for me. Still, my instincts screamed their warning from the deep wellspring of my psyche. Something awful was in fact coming our way. I just knew it. Defeated, I walked back to my couch and stared through dead eyes into the flickering LED display of the TV as Osgood walked out of the living room and down the hall, humming a tune to himself with each upbeat step. And I'm sure his spurs were jingling and jangling as, <laughs> as he rode merrily along. I didn't continue my playthrough. Amorous laughter echoed throughout the house and I heard the door to his bedroom close once more. I sat on the couch, cradling my head in my hands, 
choking back my bitter tears. In all of my concerted efforts to help him, I had only harmed, and I learned the meaning of hubris once more. The bed springs once more chanted in their agonizing unity, <laughs> and I headed into my room and turned up the radio to try and drown out the unholy noise. Laying in my bed, struggling to keep my head above the ocean of despondency in which I swam. I mean, people make choices, you know, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about it. <laughs> okay, you, you fixed him up a little bit, and he tried to run, but a little too fast, and yeah, now he's gonna scrape his knee. But that's fine. At the end of it all, he'll learn. He'll be like, oh, Ramtai was right. Because again, if she turned out to just be like a normal chick after all this, I don't think we would get this story. Anyways, a couple hours passed, and once more, a polite, mousy knock came at the portal, and I opened it to see Osgood, dressed in regular street clothes. He was heading out to get some breakfast for La Ogra and himself, and he asked me if I wanted anything from the nearby diner. Oh, he's still a sweet boy. <laughs> My appetite had already been ruined that morning, and instead I opted to dine on a plate of misery, sand, and salt. I told him no but I did thank him for his kind offer. He shrugged and headed on his merry way to procure their morning meal. Breakfast together? Ugh, things were only getting worse. I shut off my radio. All I wanted then was quiet and solitude and peace, but that can be a tall order at times. It was not maybe ten minutes after Osgood had left that I heard the door to his room open once more, and the heavy shuffling of feet heralded the movements of La Ogra throughout my house for the first time that morning. I didn't want to see her. Daylight would only further expose the horrors that lurked without and within. <laughs> oh God. I was content to pretend as if she did not exist. That did not stop her, however, from stopping out front of my door. A hand tapped on the frame. What the fuck is this? I got up from my bed and opened the door to behold her standing outside my room. She stood there half naked and in her underwear. Oh god! <laughs> I think you slammed the door and locked that shit. <laughs> uh, not today, Satan! <laughs> Dark green veins contrasted with the pale, untanned skin of her breasts like yellow highway paint on black tarmac. <laughs> oh god and her gun gave the false impression of her being naked from the waist down simply because her underwear was hidden somewhere beneath the sagging folds. <laughs> uh, oh, what a sight to see early in the morning. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Slam! Ramtide didn't do any of that, though. Instead, <laughs> I guess he's trying to be civil. He says, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> La Ogra. Hey! Osgood told me a little bit about what's going on this morning, and I just wanted to say something. Was I about to be lectured on precisely who was welcome in my own house by a half-naked she-beast interloper? <laughs> my fists balled up, and blood thundered in my ears as I imagined her soft, fleshy face rolls distorting about my hand with each furious blow that I wanted to deliver. The ogre continued. He told me about how you helped him out, and how since he's known you, he's never seen you with a girl. <laughs> we talked about it, and we think you're jealous. It's okay to be jealous, Ramtide, but uh, you don't have to be, you know. Ramtide, I'm not fucking jealous, La Ogra. La Ogra, you're acting jealous. A woman can tell, you know. Osgood didn't understand what was happening, but he's lucky to have me to explain all of this romance stuff to him. Your friend gets a new girlfriend, and you start acting all weird on him. Ugh, that sounds a lot like jealousy to me. Well, you don't have to be ram-tied, you know. I'm a pretty laid-back type of person. And I'll be honest, you're kind of cute in your own right. I just wanted you to know that... I would totally bang you too. <laughs> uh, 
God, this has happened like IRL. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people out there that could be like, stop the cap. <laughs> but this has happened to me as well. My roommate's girlfriend used to just hang out naked while I'm trying to sit there and edit a video. We never like uh, went the full way, but yeah, we, we fooled around a little bit. <laughs> Not too proud of that. That's one of the roommates that I had to help uh, move. When he was at work, I put all his stuff on the street, including that girlfriend. <laughs> God damn it. Maybe I am an asshole, but I mean, rent's got to get paid. I don't know what you want. Thanks for the good times, but we got to move on. <laughs> uh, uh, dark times. Ramtide, are you seriously coming on to me right now? La Ogra. Look, I know you boys get jealous and weird when you're feeling unloved and... From the way things seem, you've been feeling that way for a while now. All I'm saying is, we can have some fun too, Ramtide. <laughs> Osgood doesn't even have to know about it. He's out of the house right now and won't be back for a bit. We can have a quickie right here and now, and you'll be feeling right as rain by the time he comes back. What do you say, big boy? I can make you feel good. And it'll be our little secret. Oh, what a dirty fucking scumbag. That's bad news bears, dude. And I'm sure if uh, this woman didn't look like a pig ogre, <laughs> Ramtide would have uh, at least considered it. <laughs> but things sitting as they are, no. No. Just fuck no. <laughs> she reached up one of her ham fists to her bra and pulled the cups down. She walked towards me. Ugh. Kicking the door closed behind her, exposing the rest of the green tiger stripes that painted her tube-like titties. <laughs> oh, God, dude. No. Insisting that if I just reached out and fondled them, everything in my life would be just peachy. Ramtide, get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> the only proper response. La Ogre recoiled, a hurt look on her face, which quickly devolved into scorn and vitriol as I unloaded my own scorn and vitriol. My innermost thoughts were laid bare. Ramtide, you're fucking disgusting. You're a malformed fucking miscreant who's leveraging the fact that you're an easy and undiscriminating fuckhole to extort my roommate, the purest goddamn soul that I've ever met in this miserable existence for pleasantries and niceties and status and favors and he's eating out of your goddamn hand because you took his virginity. Now you come into my room, my innermost fucking sanctuary, trying to leverage your rotting vagina against me for the same ends as well? Here you are, betraying the confidence of someone who, in all his purity and virtue, sees something in you and has come to trust you implicitly, has come to love you because he doesn't know better over his best fucking friend simply because you let him get his dick wet. <sighs> Never mind I've stood up for that kid. Never mind I fought for his dignity. I fought for his well-being and never mind that I'll always fight for him at every twist and fucking turn. The last thing that I would ever do is betray his confidence. Doubly so when it comes to the likes of you. I never liked you from the moment you stepped into this house. You are not fucking welcome here. Do you hear me? You're being put on notice, bitch. God is my witness. This isn't ending the way that you want it to. <laughs> God, now the fury is been unleashed. The dogs of war howling for blood. <laughs> And I'm sure La Ogre is not going to take this lying down. She says, I offered my olive branch, Ramtide. Actually, you tried to touch Ramtide's olive branch. <laughs> I hope you always remember that it's you who rejected it. If that's the game you want to play, then we can play it. You couldn't handle a woman like me anyways. I bet you've got a small shriveled dick to boot that doesn't even get hard. <laughs> I could tell just by looking at you, fat boy. That's why no woman wants to touch you. That's why nobody loves you. 
Doesn't matter, though, because Osgood is mine. I can already tell he's a good boy, and I'm grateful you shaped him into the little perfect gentleman for me. And now I think I'll be keeping him all for myself. You, on the other hand, you're obviously trouble, and you're going to learn your place, or you've got to go. So here's what's going to happen, Ramtide. Not a word of this discussion reaches Osgood's ears, because if it does, I'll just say that you forced yourself on me while he was gone. He already thinks you're jealous. Do you really want to lose your precious little friend because you raped his girlfriend out of spite? <laughs> no? Then you better behave. Whatever, bitch. Call the cops. Do a rape kit. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Osgood would end up the one in jail, which uh, we definitely don't want. No, no, he's a good, wholesome boy. But Osgood would definitely believe her if she said that, I do think, which is unfortunate. So what do you pick? Keeping Osgood and this leg beard in your life or cutting them both out? Ugh, tough call, but I say cut him out. <laughs> it's really easy for me to cut people out, honestly. She turned her back on me then and waddled away. Her sagging, cellulite-infused protrusion of a gut swaying with each step that she took, before pausing at the threshold on her way out, her hand resting upon the doorknob. She did her best to look coy and seductive as she shot a glance back at me from over her shoulder, saying, But honestly, though, if you change your mind and decide that you want to, uh, cooperate with me... <laughs> You can just talk to me when Osgood is out of the house, and I'll go face down ass up for you. <laughs> You're a stubborn and rude little bastard with a fiery temper, I can tell. But I bet that fire you've got makes you a beast in the sack. Osgood's fun and all. He's got good stamina, and he wants to please his lover. But he's just too fucking nice about it, and it kind of turns me off. I want a man who will push my face down into the floor and call me his filthy little slut. <laughs> Let me know if you change your mind, babe. I'll be thinking about you when I fuck your roommate. <laughs> God damn it, dude. She is foul. Which is it? I got a small dick that doesn't work or I'm great in the sack. <laughs> Pick a lane. Either way, this is not happening. <laughs> not with you. My jaw unhinged from my face and fell to the floor as she blew me a fucking kiss from over her shoulder. Ugh. I couldn't even vocalize anymore as La Ogre left my room. I stood dumbstruck at the exchange that had just transpired and began to pace my now thankfully lonely sanctuary once more, racking my brain for solutions by which I could rectify this rapidly devolving situation. Somehow, I had to reach Osgood. I had to tear asunder the veil of pent-up hormones that clouded his vision and judgment and expose La Ogra for the horrifying beast that I knew she was before the tendrils of her honeyed words could snake any deeper into that wholesome boy's psyche. <sighs> I had nothing, however. My only plan that came to mind was simply to get to Osgood first, at the precise moment that he got back from his breakfast run, and bless him with the knowledge of the horrifying events that had transpired. I left my sanctuary, my oath now sworn, and headed into the living room to catch Osgood the moment that he crossed that threshold. I walked down the hallway and rounded the corner, and much to my chagrin, La Ogra sat there upon the couch. Of course she did. <laughs> I observed that she had one leg cocked up on the armrest and the other laid out across the coffee table, having kicked my Xbox controller and an empty coffee mug to the floor. Fucking pig. <laughs> Both her hands wrapped around her gunt and snaked down to her nether regions, pulling her panties aside with one hand and pleasuring herself with the other. Oh, God damn it, no! <laughs> Two cries of... What are you doing? Mine, incredulous, and hers, positively sultry, filled the vacant room like the stench of stagnating yeast. <laughs> With one glistening finger, she motioned for me to come closer. 
I stood there, flush with rage, and lost in a sexual jungle without any clear way by which to proceed. Yeah, this is a bad situation. <laughs> Flee! <laughs> Turn tail and run. And of course, it was at that moment that a key slid into the lock. <laughs> God damn it! It's like a sitcom, except really horrible, uh, funky sexual sitcom. <laughs> and the deadbolt turned. The portal to my modest apartment swung wide open, and Osgood stepped in, carrying a bag full of takeout boxes. Osgood, hey, I'm back! The bag crumpled to the floor, the contents of the boxes spilling out inside as he surveyed the situation. His woman spread eagle upon the couch, fondling herself, and his roommate standing there in observation. La Ogre and I both looked over at him as if we were simultaneous deer caught in the headlights of an oncoming big rig. Us three all stood there in the middle of our terse quandary before Osgood finally shut the door behind him and inhaled deeply. Boy! His face was beginning to flush red with rage, and he shook with fury and bitterness. With an authority with which I never heard coming from his voice, one that carried the tenor of his recently awakened masculinity, he spoke. Osgood, what are you doing? <laughs> oh shit, he turned into Arnie at the end. <laughs> Special thanks goes out to Red X and the greater Red X community, a group of people who I absolutely love and adore. I would also like to thank my gorgeous and wonderful patrons who, as of the time of this writing, I can't actually list because I smashed my phone while I was out camping and I'm very sad about it and I can't look because I'm a hobo without regular internet. <laughs> that says it all. You need to get a phone that can do a hotspot, dude. Anyways, still, I want you guys to know that you are loved, and I appreciate all the kindness and support that you have shown me as I make my way through this curious adventure that we call life. Well, goddamn me, boy. Stuck between a rock and a hard place as per usual, I do suppose. <laughs> I tell you, Ramtide's luck is uh, one of his lowest stats. That was just such a bad moment. Walk out to the living room. I wonder if she had all this planned out or if she was actually hoping to, like, lure you in. It seemed like, you know, her deer in the headlights look meant that she didn't plan to get caught doing this by Osgood. But now you got some splaining to do. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm proud of Ramtide for not taking the plunge, although I don't think that I would have either. When I messed around with my roommate's lady all those years ago... <laughs> It was mostly because, you know, I was young, and I was single, and she was there, and available, and also not a giant pig. <laughs> Pretty slim and stuff, you know? But I did never go the full nine, which, uh, <laughs> I guess is some sort of consolation. Anyways, <laughs> I'm definitely interested to see how the next part unfolds. This is, uh, certainly a sticky situation, yes. <laughs> But I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe on the video. That is massively appreciated. Maybe share it around if you should like. That is the big brain play. We've also got a bunch of stuff in the descriptions. The three Ps, plugs, playlists, and podcasts. Oh, yeah. And my social medias. I am everywhere. Twitter, Discord, Facebook mostly, though. <laughs> We've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them Jerry, Jerry much. <laughs> So thank you, Robert Waits, Baron Von Waggy Pants, Jarhead Jerry, Ura, River Jerry, blah, 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 <laughs> TSF Kirby, Alexis Smith, Captain Clown Jerry, Honk Honk, Cinnamon Susie, Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry, Hee Hee, Hey Jerry, <laughs> Leverson, Silent Revolver, Sergeant Jelly Donut, the, G <laughs> the Jerry behind the slaughter, watch out, Sundari Jerry, Baka, Princess Jerry, Aaron W, Ananaki, Asian Persuasion Jerry, yeah, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch out for that guy, Becca Smith, Bitch Gremlin, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, oh, Camille Sarah, Cherish Kitsune, Commander J Tank, 
Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, Jasmine, a pimp named Jay Crisp, J.M. Coon, Jerry with an I. <laughs> that is a different Jerry. The original Jerry, of course. Jerry! Jerry Satori. The Jerry that's more Jerry than other Jerry's, and that's a Jerry fact. <laughs> that's four Jerry's in a row. That's our high score to beat. <laughs> John Hero, Simboofa, because if you're boofing, it's free. Kira M, Kitsikin, Lady Jerry Nix, <laughs> Miss Monday, Lexi Loves Jojo, Lord Lionel, Little Lone Wolf, Jack is Rule, Vanilla Mel, Melgar the Destroyer, Mint Chip, Mirthful Baker, Mr. Jerry, my boy in that one, Nick, Natari, Nightmare Jerry, watch out, Orgami Jerry, gotta fold them all, <laughs> Phantom of the Pines, Kara Kins, and Jerry Beth. Wait, wait, that's something like that. <laughs> Sidestep, Red X's favorite, Marble Jerry. It's like picking between your kids. Redwind, Rosemary Miller, Rouse Tower, Cider Drinker, Serena Dash, Staples Jerry, <laughs> Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tapioca Bugaloo, Tato Fair, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Wilmax, Yet Another Different Jerry. Yes, it is. <laughs> Zero Blacktail, 211 Jerry, a normal Jerry who is right next to 211 Jerry. Admiral A. Tank, what are we doing? There's going to be more admirals? <laughs> oh no, to lead the Jerry army. Here we go. Welcome to the fold, A. Tank. <laughs> Amara, A. Roxers, Azel Fletch, that's a new one. Welcome, my friend. Banish Knight, Barbushka's Irradiated Jam, Cake Jerry, the original different Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Tastes Great, Less Filling, Carrot Jerry, Good For Your Eyes, Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Crip Jerry, Oh No, Cuban Jerry, Smoke Some With Your Dogs, Defawn Jerry, <laughs> Ghost of Alpha, Goose Says Honk, Jerry Aldo Rivera, <laughs> uh, Jerry Bean, Yum Yum, Jerry Zilla, <laughs> John indoors, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Lapichi Jerry, ooh, Life of a Guardian, Little Land Woods, maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Naga Viper, or Jerry Cam, <laughs> Princess Rosalie Jerry, congrats on the marriage, Ghosty, Raiga, Raptor Art, Saint's Blessing, Silurian King, Snary, that's Snom Jerry, <laughs> Spoonie the Rogue, uh, Steampunk Alley, the Necro Jerry Con, the original Jerry, who is not the original Jerry, and the most different Jerry, quite possibly. We've also got Token Black Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Promise. Swears he's it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> God damn, dude. I'm getting kind of faster at it. I am still working on, like, the song parody for everybody, but uh, it's hard because there's new people added every day. So <laughs> we'll see when it comes out. Don't stop, uh, you know, joining up on the Patreon just because you want the song. That would be bad. <laughs> the Patreon is important indeed. And, uh, yeah, I hope some other people will consider signing up. But if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watch some more Red X videos. Maybe. That'd be cool. Anyways. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. Don't fall for them leg beards. <laughs> I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.